Hey folks, how's it going? Remash here and welcome back to another deck video for Cards and Castles 2 where today we are praising the glory of the fish. That is right folks. Uh, it has been a wild time uh, since the last patch for CNC2 and today we're going to be talking about one of the more prevalent decks to make an appearance out of said patch here. Uh, this is with some of the more, or the very recent uh, changes to Loremaster Tarius and Meek. We won't be seeing Tarius today, but we will be seeing a lot of Blessed R the Meek. So, uh, bound to be a good time. Hope you guys are excited for it. But uh, before we get into it, just want to wish everyone a happy holidays and a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year if you are celebrating anything. Of course, um, the holidays are coming up. Me, myself, I'm going to be uh, at least taking the weekend to enjoy the time with family and uh the holiday season so uh yeah we'll be back to videos uh in next week but i uh, hope you guys are going to uh enjoy english yes i think that worked out anyways let's go ahead and take a look at the fish deck folks glory to the fish all right folks and here is our deck list for today of course revolving around the glory of the man fish uh, glory to the fish if you will as, uh, yeah, this has pretty much been a deck that, uh, well, has actually been nerfed since the last time I really played it, uh, with Smitty now going to three gold here. But I think, I think it's a change that doesn't affect it too much. Uh, still very playable. Still, Smitty is a decent include here for the deck. Uh, but essentially, we've got a lot of things going on here, so let's go ahead and break down the important one. Uh, the fact that the assassins in the uh, have gotten more dangerous, uh, level 3 in particular, since they now synergize with a card known as Blessed R the Meek. Increase a level 3 unit uh, by 5 levels, basically. Level 3 or lower units. So basically, level 2 goes to level 7, level 3 goes to level 8, etc, etc. And that makes cards like Manfish, like Magic Eater... Uh, a lot of the level 3 assassins actually uh, a lot deadlier because of the rework they got recently in which they deal just flat out double damage from behind and moving quickly. Some of this damage actually can do wonders to the castle. But the reason why we're focusing on Manfish, uh, Manfish specifically is that because he comes with a great ability of the 50% armor uh, during a storm. So he gets a hefty damage reduction boost when the weather is a little rainy. And there are quite a few generations we have in this uh, to ensure that we have a storm. So... And since there really aren't a lot of other weather effects in Iraq with Storm, mo when you get a Storm off, you'll most likely have it for the rest of the game. So this is just a permanent 50% armor unit that, of course, can become a dangerously fast-growing unit very quickly with Blessed of the Meek. So essentially, this is a super fish, hence why we are, you know, praising glory to the fish. But regardless of the fish, we do have a couple other shenanigans up our sleeves in here that make this deck just a little more spooky uh things like genesis which are creating copies of level three or lower units so you can of course make multiple man fishes uh that maybe you can synergize with multiple meeks or genesis as another way to steal opponent's units per se i say steal you make a copy of it most people don't know that genesis actually affects the opponent's units in which you can steal um any level three or lower units so say they throw out a scout turn two you have no response except you have genesis in your hand if they go in to strike your castle uh, and use the action, you can Genesis their scout, create a copy of it for yourself, and then use against them as well. So Genesis, I think, is going to become one of those cards that people maybe start to include more often because it is just such a powerhouse of a card that maybe people are going to pick up on more that there's a lot of level 3 or lower units running around in the meta, things like the Assassins. Some of the more prevalent ones, folks, are level 3, so they can be copied and stolen in a matter of seconds. So, uh, yeah, Genesis is a cool little inclusion in that. Cannoneer as well, we're also rocking in here. Uh, Uj showed me the funny stuff you can do with a huge level 8 Cannoneer off of the Meek. And again, it's also another Genesis target. It is level 3 at base stat line, so again, something that we can copy over. And Eviscerate, a card that probably not a lot of people want to use, but I find it's a great sort of instant removal spell. Uh, for 5 gold, you can just pop a unit. Granted, there are some units that kind of get around this. Obviously, the heavy hitters, uh, like legendary cards, like dragons. We're going to probably take more than an Eviscerate to kill off. More things with Deflect, uh, which we'll see later on inside of the matchups here. 
uh, as a bit of a spoiler. But overall, uh, I think it's pretty a solid deck list here. And we're going to go over sort of the card by card for you before we get into it. Uh, so obviously, we're starting off and go over here. One-Eyed Matty is going to be our brick of the deck. I say brick. Uh, he's not exactly the strongest unit to pop out on the board here. But he is necessary to contraband our uh, Blessed uh, the Meek. Uh, it is the only Crusader card in our uh pirate and druid faction so we need to be at three copies a mirroring as well another great target for genesis or meek with uh, the bird the bird of course level three you make that bigger with meek you make that uh, copied over with genesis whatever you want to do with it you create another mirroring instantly on the board he's also at three copies just so that we can keep this deck a little on the faster side running two copies of school of history for draw purposes as you can see we're not really too reliant on mana in the deck so figured two school of histories in here can be used for additional draw power the genesis we've already mentioned here the rusty hooks i'm trying out uh people have been using this card pretty frequently uh it can be nasty with that range if you can position it correctly so i'm deciding to use it here as sort of the warrior over the scout uh, treasure bandit for some treasure ramp veil of the assassin for some additional attack boosts to make fish stronger and scary or any other unit that maybe is buffed over by meek typhoon blast is an early removal plus storm generator blessed of the meek uh to create obviously our big threat as a uh you know level eight unit rabbit in here for the leap helps you deal with some flyers as you can see the deck eh, has some difficulty dealing with flyers rabbit of course helps us in the early game with that Manfish, glory to the fish, no further explanation there. Uh, Smitty, uh, just because he's so good as a generic unit here, plus allows the dwarven weapons to come into the deck, which makes fish even scarier. Curse Vessel, uh, another storm generator primarily, but also the skeletal bodies help out a ton in the early game. Cannoneer for some big explosions, and again, a little bit of extra uh, spice in the deck. And Eviscerate as our removal spell. Really, the only expensive thing in this deck outside of Matty uh, would be Eviscerate, which is. Kind of neat, but still big damage uh, to create on units, which can be pretty important. So that is going to cover our deck list today. Of course, looking fantastic as always. Let's go ahead and get into the matchups, though, and see how this deck can perform. All right, folks, and game number one underway as we're going up against Uj here, Vember, uh, as he's also known as, uh, I guess it's more appropriate to say Uj. And we're starting off this game first because admittedly, uh, looking back at this one, there are a lot of misplays that I kind of want to harp in on and just, you know, kind of show that this deck, even through some pretty crucial misplays, can get the job done, albeit, uh, you know, maybe a little lucky here and there. We'll, we'll go ahead and explain more. On that later so we're gonna open up here he's gonna start with the bear hog we're gonna typhoon blast this is going to generate our storm to make manfish more powerful uh typhoon blast can eat through bear hogs armor which is pretty neat in this case so we're gonna go ahead and set up the manfish provide a bit of a threat here he's gonna earth titan in the, a nice spot here to be a little more defensive we can't get around it and if we hit castle the earth titan would be able to do some damage to us so instead we're gonna just kind of throw our manfish off to the side here and let it come into our face for now uh, throwing it back to him though, it is going to be his initiative. We pick up an eviscerate, which is neat. He's going to throw down a smitty to protect the backside of that earth titan, and we are going to cannoneer in response. Cannoneer is also a nice way to kind of get around uh, defenses like this for assassins. Being able to snipe off a target, do some explosive damage to follow up can be pretty important. Uh, but uh, you're going to see here, he's going to use the dwarven weapons from smitty to protect uh, the earth titan just a little bit more. But opens up actually here. I'm not sure if that was intentional. Or if it was maybe a way to... I think it was more of a way to bait in the manfish to see if he can kill it with the smitty. Uh, we are going to try and go for the bait, though, just to show you how strong the armor is. Going to pop into the Earth Titan from the back here. Going to take only six points of damage. He just slapped me with the uh, smitty here. And uh, we do hold on. Uh, it is, you know, looking like that is pretty big damage. But uh, we are able to use this assassin for next turn to deal uh, some more uh, backwards damage. Or deal double damage from behind. That's the idea. And uh, he's going to throw out the Atarius in response. We're going to throw Meek onto our Cannoneer here. Now, I would like to throw this on the Manfish. Oh, actually, Manfish is level 2. I thought it was level 3 before. Oh, well, that's that's a minor error. Still level 7 fish is big. Anyway, Cannoneer going to level 8 here is going to be pretty big. Uh, it creates a huge threat that we can use to defend ourselves with in the early game. And uh, with the Explosive Trigger dealing 65% of that Meek damage to other targets... Uh, it's pretty important here. So he's gonna pop our manfish with Tarius. We're gonna swipe in for some early damage with the hooks. Pass things back here. Uh, he's going to, I believe, research for the Meek here. I don't think he's running any sort of Drakes to tutor in. So um, another Meek deck on the other side of things, which is fine. We are going to, of course, respond with the Amirian. He's going to bless the Meek here. 
And again, here's a slight misplay on my part. I go for the Genesis copy on the Smitty because I want that uh, arrival trigger. Not really a rival trigger, but Dwarven Weapon. Nah. Smitty is sort of worded in a way that you can add the Dwarven Weapons to your hand on just a creation or summon of them. Different from an arrival trigger because arrival represents from the hand. When you play it from the hand, a card will activate. That is what the arrival trigger will do here. Because uh, Smitty doesn't have that, if he's created anywhere on the board when he's summoned in general, you add a Dwarven Weapon. So in here, in this case, I'm stealing a Dwarven Weapons copy for myself, but probably should have gone for the Amirian bird form to protect my Amirian here because this smitty actually has enough power to just walk in and uh yeah clean up my Amirian very easily off the board here when I could have protected it so we're gonna pop the um smitty in response to that uh, we'll have a smitty of our own but it will get taken out by Taurus walking down here so again not the best move on my part but I mean I really wanted the dwarven weapons at the time probably should have just stuck with the bird form and passed over since he couldn't get around it but we live and we learn. So, of course, moving into the next point here. At this point, I gonna throw, I'm gonna throw out the Rusty Hooks and eviscerate the Lore Master Tarth on the board here. I don't want him tutoring any more potential Blessed Are the Meeks into hand. That can get out of hand real fast if he has a target for it and can double Meek it. Well, not double Meek it, but multiple targets to Meek. He has more copies of it in hand. So, again, that becomes scary. So, of course, moving in now, uh, he's going to Reconciliation Sentry Golem for turn here. Again, a bit more of a misplay on my part. I walk in with Hooks and actually walk in with the Cannoneer first, when I should have probably just moved this uh, bottom Rusty Hooks or attacked with it first to get the damage on. He's going to use the Sentry Golem to walk behind, uh, get into position, pop my Hooks, and uh, gain the levels off of it. So, it's not exactly great for me, but I'm thinking, okay, we have the Cannoneer in position. Uh, Earth Titan coming down now makes me worried. We'll done to kill a rabbit. Cursed Vessel going to go ahead and generate some more bodies for us and we'll pass it back. I'm thinking at this point, the Cannoneer should be enough. We have Veil. We have weapons in hand. This should be enough to end the game here. However, he goes with the preparation. Kunai is my rabbit away as sort of the um, contingency plan. And then follows up with Bless of the Meek, which uh, at this point I had forgotten that he tutored or didn't think that he tutored because at the time I didn't realize which search he committed to. So, and here, Blessed Other Meek is gonna come out onto the Earth Titan, gonna try and create a big boy. I'm gonna try and defend here though, Dwarven Weapons on the Cannoneer to kind of give it the extra strength. However, he follows up with a weapons of his own. This should be more than enough to walk in and clean up the Cannoneer, as you can see right here, 56 points of damage is gross. Although I move away with the hooks though to protect it from the incoming golem. I remember this time and so golem left with no target. He's going to move forward, do his thing, and we'll see a pass back from him. Moving to round nine, we do get the Maddie, which is big here. As much as he has a brick, he will of course be useful in this case. He's going to try and get around things to snipe. Uh, meanwhile, Uj going to go for the preparation. Kunai on the rush hooks, which is interesting, and then a bear hog as well to kind of clean up that hooks uh, for follow up here. And golem to clean up the maddie i'm surprised though he didn't block with it uh or at least block the maddie with the bear hog golem at this point here to kind of force me back and maybe would have taken less damage because of this but i guess he wanted to use the bear hog as they clean up the hook so it didn't kill him unfortunately our kind of our maddie rust hooks combo not enough to clean up his castle as you can see here golem walks in from behind here he's going to pop into the maddie uh, i'm not going to be able to do much with the pirates at this point so i'm just kind of moving around a bit Kind of, kind of going to try and keep them away from the golems here but i mean one just will die weakening the golem which is cool and then of course earth titan marching forward as he does uh this is going to be what uge wants as the game ender uh it's a big colossi that not only deals additional damage from the meek but it's class bonus deals double damage to structures including castles so meek colossi very very scary especially uh earth titan which kind of fits the whole max idea behind that so anyway we're playing a man fish for turn man fish of course is good but in, in this case it might not help us win the game here he's going to be able to just clean up from the bottom there uh we're going to pop my skeletal pirates which is fine i take the opportunity to just go ahead and pop into at least one of the remaining golems here just so we can try to control the board a little bit of course the armor from man fish ensuring that we'll survive that initial golem hit which is huge and keeps a body there on board, which is fantastic. Earth Titan will move in, get another Dwarven Weapons, because, you know, why not? It's ensuring that, you know, on the pass back, uh, Uj can kill me. However, uh, the one card I pull for turn is going to be a Cannoneer. A perfect way to position my unit right there 
and still be able to hit castle so we are going to sneak away with the win here uh, and kind of show that even through all of the potential misplays that we had throughout the game the deck still can recover quite well and uh, i mean overall i think Uj definitely would have had it if we didn't have the initiative um thankful that the candidate did pop into my hand but uh yeah it can't be good when that happens uh when you're on the receiving end but anyways game number one of course locked it down with the win let's go ahead and jump into game number two and see what goes down all right folks and game number two underway here as uh we pick up quite an opener cursed vessel into the manfish of course it's something that we love to see here and this is actually when smindy by the way was at two I, you probably also noticed it during uh the last game as well but uh, in these matches uh you'll see smithy at two gold this was um pre patch to smithy recently making him three gold aside from two uh, again i still think him being at three doesn't change much in the deck um it's still very worthwhile to use here and even after i think testing a couple times uh individually uh smithy at three gold was still fine for me not gonna change our opening play though we're gonna open up with the turn one cursed vessel he's gonna uh our opponent excuse me will uh begin with flying books turn two uh, i think my english is rapidly deteriorating as you could see uh going into the crewmans now uh as we move into the next turn here i'm gonna go for the rabbit instead of the manfish here noticing the flying books uh this is an instance where the rabbit kind of comes in handy you can easily pop over the books with the rabbit gain the frenzy and then continue on your way here but he notices that decides to chill back with the books here and allows the rest of my units to move in here we're on initiative next turn so i figured it's a good time to push the rabbit in this will pretty much kill off his books next turn and then we'll of course move around here trying to avoid chain a little bit we're throwing out that other skeletal crewman away for the time being uh but now we're going to yield into the um manfish here on turn uh four however he's got the grudge bear which is going to be a bit of an issue for the deck of course manfish you know runs on storm without the storm generation or the storm in play he only becomes a simple level two assassin not getting the armor of any kind so at this point we're in a bit of trouble uh he's gonna pop into one of my crewmen here he's gonna do some chain damage we really don't want to touch the grudge bear right now so we're gonna position things away we're hoping that maybe the smithies in hand can deal a little bit of extra uh damage via the way of their dwarven weapons but we pull a mirian for turn which is interesting here as our opponent goes for another bank of southport here and ramping a lot the beastmaster again Kind of clues me in that this is the sort of the uh fenrir ragnarok build here where you use bank ramping into fenrir and then follow up the ragnarok same turn clearing the board and then making way for your uh big units that are now free kind of reminiscent of the old war party decks in cnc one but a little harder to pull off this time around since your win condition isn't just a, uh, a single turn spell card uh, we're going to go for Amiri now in response to this. I figured, you know, not really much better to do. We could have gotten the Smitties on board, but I feel like Amiri is a bit more impactful on this board. I am quickly proven wrong by the Frost Blast, uh, Ice Explorer combination, Arctic Explorer combination, excuse me. As uh, he uses some Winds in the North as well to uh, mess with my rabbit here. Veil of the Assassin on the rabbit is going to be enough for it to clean up the Grudge Bear. And that's why I like Veil in here. It provides a bit more of that extra kick to some units that actually are going to be useful to pop some of those threats here like grudge bear or other threats you might see later on the board so that's able to clean up the grudge bear and we can move in freely here with the skeletal crewman our opponent's got no other actions here so actually well not my mind he is going to um commit to a very wacky play here which was uh mana or using the mana to ramp into gold from bank of southport to pop my killer rabbit with shatter strike and that's not really an effective way to use shatter strike I, I will say it's unfortunate but um you know i think he was feeling very threatened by the rabbit at that point so uh it made sense to him why he had to pop it we'll actually use the opportunity to pop the arctic explorer from behind here just to kind of take that big threat off the board and thankfully we pull the backup Amirian in hand uh but not before uh using a smitty treasury bandit combo here uh to just generate a couple of extra cards for us uh, i believe i go for the treasure bandit pop on the beast master yep we're going to use that for some ramp later crewman's going to pop into the castle here he's going to take out the manfish with the royal guard makes sense 
we'll of course push in with some smithies here because at this time uh, or in this deck really we actually you know, just want the smithies for the weapons once they serve that purpose they can be just used as uh, some annoying bodies to your opponent and we'll pass back over at this point uh, unfortunately he's gonna go for some more mana ramp here to try and reach that uh Fenrir ragnarok combo but unfortunately not really using i think it would have been better off if he had the Fenrir and played it this turn but i mean i'm not sure if that desperately changed i'm not sure if the count was off i had forgotten what Fenrir is currently at versus what he might have needed in hand math 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 i know but uh didn't go for the Fenrir here which is fine for us uh, moving into combat, he will pop the Elvish Band, or the Treasury Band, excuse me, with the Royal Guard. Books into Crewman to make it deal less damage. But at this point, Dwarven Weapons on the Emirian twice because of those two Smitties. Moving in with a big 10 damage Emirian here, landing 27 to face. And everything else going to go ahead and get their shots in too. Smitty dealing 9, Crewman dealing 4, and uh, we are pretty much poised to take out the game next turn. Putting the exclamation point on it with the Cannoneer, of course, making an appearance once again. And then, of course, having a man fish because, you know, why not? A reconciliation, which is fine. Joan Viet, which is a nice play. Uh, Joan Viet able to swoop the initiative back over to him. Uh, so that way he could potentially take out the Emirian here. Unfortunately, with the damage that Royal Guard sustained, it's not going to be enough, even with the damage booster. You see, we just barely hang on. And at that point, we use the Kennedy to shoot in. We use Emirian to heal himself up a little bit. And, of course, that gives him enough power to pop the opponent's castle. Very, very nice stuff. Playing even through the Blizzard, uh, this deck can still grab the win. Now, mind you, we never really saw the Fenrir combo from our opponent here. Notice at this point in the game, our resources were running low. And even between both games, actually, it shows that this deck is really just a lot of gas. Once you run out of said gas, uh, you start to have a problem and can easily fall on the crackback. So it's important that you do have school in your matchups for in uh, instances like this, providing that draw power throughout the game to kind of keep your resources nice and healthy. But with that being said, that will wrap up another game. Let's go ahead and jump into game number three and see what we can do for our last match. All right, folks, and game number three against the Gremlin himself as we are uh, drawn in here with a not too bad of an opener. Uh, Manfish, Smitty, and Genesis in the opening hand. We love to see it. Uh, I believe this was actually Beastly's um, Griffin Meek deck that he was running before. This was on the initial changes of Meek here. And so uh, this deck was, I think, still fresh at the time. He even runs Season of Growth in here to generate early mana ramp for said Griffin here, uh, which is annoying, but not something that our deck hates per se, because we can do funny things like Rusty Hooks, uh, which you'll see here. Now, probably should have thrown it behind this video to kind of get the range to protect, but that's no big deal. A Lumbering Oak isn't dealing that much damage to us, so we can kind of get away with doing a little bit of this. As you can see here, Smitty going to pop into the Trent actually by itself, and we'll use the Rusty Hooks to clean up the Smitty on his side of the board here, gaining some board dominance for the early stages of this game. Hildo ramp into Griffin, turn three. Uh, technically, well, yeah, turn three, which is gross. And uh, we'll see this become a bit of annoying, uh, an annoyance here. Excuse me, going to pop into the Manfish. Uh, he knows... Uh, and understands the power that fish yields so of course he respects it and will pop it with said griffin meanwhile we're gonna get Amirian into our hand which is going to be a nice way to help us deal with this griffin uh Amirian close to stats in uh yeah close to stats in griffin although getting further away now as he of course does a lot of things here uh weapons fortify uh bestial rage just making the griffin as scary as possible kind of dumping his hand into this play Griffin going to go ahead and pop it to Smitty, um, not a Mirian, which was interesting. I'm not sure if that was the right choice, but I think in his head, he was going to go on the initiative next turn. So it made sense why he popped into the Smitty there. So that way he can just walk up, pop a Mirian next turn. Regardless, he'll follow up the Killer Rabbit for turn and another Beastmaster or a Beastmaster to probably uh, kick in another Griffin or Rabbit, depending on, well, actually, no. We're getting a rabbit because griffin is flying i always forget that that's a c1 habit anyway at this point i would have loved to use eviscerate to pop griffin but griffin with the deflect is going to make that a little more challenging for us so we're going to have to do something a little bit different here going for the second emirian in the back this is going to ensure that even if our first one dies which will uh, as you can see uh, we'll have a second one to use on the board here to try and clean this up for our next turn or if we can be lucky maybe this turn even with the weapons though griffin will hold on 
So uh, we're not going to be able to get the kill, but we'll get it next turn because of the initiative pass back uh, in our next round. He'll use the rabbit to pop our rusty hooks, move everything else forward to end off the turn here. And while it is annoying, it does set us up for a great cannoneer here. As you can see, the explosive uh, will do some damage to everything kind of clumped up in this area right here. And as you can see, cannoneer uh, hitting against the oak. Uh, Griffin going to go ahead and die. And we'll see BC go ahead and go for a meek on the spiny. We could have gone for a genesis and that spell response instance, but I felt like the rabbit and the spiny weren't great targets same with the beastmaster actually i think the beastmaster would have actually no it wouldn't have triggered because of course the arrival so of course we're gonna watch the spiny get a little bit big and big but unfortunately not enough to take out the emir and at that point bc goes ahead and surrenders because his big win con was popped off the board here so uh yeah <laughs> uh unfortunately the griffins could not stand against the might of the fish here but i mean hey I'm, maybe not the fish itself but more of the emir in this case regardless I still think that was pretty uh, funny. The fact that even with a big super powered ramp griffin, the deck can still play through it with the help of a Mirin, which overall is probably one of the better legendaries going around in the game right now. So uh, yeah, definitely worth running a Mirin if you haven't already been doing it in your Druid decks. But overall, folks, that is going to bring us uh, to the end of our last and final matchup here. So let's go ahead and close out this video properly. All right, folks, and that is going to bring us to the end of another video here. Glory to the fish as uh, the fish deck will move on. I don't expect anything to last long, to be honest, and that's why I'm making this video now. Um, the fact that it really works with Meek, and overall the fact that Meek is probably one of the stronger spells in the game right now, it's probably gonna be addressed come uh, once the holidays are over when uh, the dev team returns from their holiday vacation. So it's something to kind of worth consider playing if you want to in the brief time you have now with it, if you wanna really have some fun, but uh yeah i think that is going to do it for me so be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it be sure to share it with your friends be sure to subscribe if you're new or haven't done so already uh it is the best way you can support the channel after all and be sure to comment letting me know what you guys think of today's deck list and yeah uh like i said that's gonna be it for me for now so until next time guys stay gaming